Uh, and welcome to another episode of the Bakari Sellers Podcast. I hope you guys checked out our uh, debate show recap, the instant reaction with myself and Angela Rye and Andrew Gillum. Uh, my next episode has uh, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester from the great state of Delaware. But today we're having one of my very good friends in somewhat of an emergency pod because of the <laughs> news of the day, the news of the morning. I wanted to go and get the best reporter I could find. They were all busy. So I have Jonathan <laughs> Martin with us today on the Bakari Sellers podcast. J Mart from the New York Times. What's going on, my brother? I was the eighth phone call you made, but I picked it up. So. <laughs> but you, well. at least you picked it up. Everybody else with the voicemail. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get yeah. started. Let's get some background real quick on this story because it broke l late last night. My yeah. friends on the West Coast don't even know what happened. Mm. When did we know that the president and the first lady tested positive? And what are the protocols now for the White House and the Trump campaign? How do you campaign while quarantining? Well, we didn't find out until about one in the morning last night, Eastern time, when the president himself, um, fittingly for this this era, <laughs> tweeted it. Uh, because how else are we going to find breaking news and the Trump era besides on Twitter.com? And um, But the word had started to sort of spread a little bit earlier, at least speculation, Bakari, because Hope Hicks, his uh, very close aide, uh, tested positive. And Bloomberg News reported that. That was not released by the White House. It was reported by Bloomberg tell News. Me, tell me, let's dig on that real quick. So yeah. why didn't the White House release that bit of news? That would, Don't you think that's of some public import? Well, you know, we've reported that they didn't want it to get out, that you know, they want to sort of keep that withheld, at least for the time being. And so that got reported, though, I guess, 9 o'clock last night. And then so speculation sort of got going. And then the president said that he and his wife had been tested, but he didn't indicate the results. Um, now, those tests are instantaneous. I thought they were. Yeah, they get rapid the tests, test, don't they? The, the, the test that he takes are about 90 minutes, two hours after that, tweet, where he said he had been tested. He then put out the now famous tweet saying he's positive. And so that's about one in the morning last night. Now. We got news uh, this morning about 8 a.m. Bacar that uh, Vice President Pence has tested negative. Uh, so that that's good news to hear. Um, that is good news to hear. But let, let's back up to you. Uh, yesterday, after knowing, and we, we don't know. I mean, we would assume the president does know that Hope Hicks test positive. Uh, he continued to campaign. Didn't he go to a fundraiser in New Jersey? He went to his country club up in New Jersey in Bedminster, had an event. With people, uh, you know, close to him, um, you know, wasn't taking precautions, and then even in remarks that he delivered last night from the White House, uh, he said that um, you know the end is in sight, the end of the pandemic is in sight. Um, you know, while he literally is is taking the test, that's going to come back positive for him. And let me ask one more question along this timeline yeah. while we're building it out. Uh, I believe, if I'm correct in knowing, they knew Hope Hicks, or we Hope Hicks tested positive. Let me not yeah. say they know, but Hope Hicks tested positive before Kaylee McEnany walked out and gave her press briefing yesterday. Yes. That's, my room, That's my uh, understanding. In a room full of reporters. Right. Uh, did she did she know at that time what are reporters? I mean, I you know, I know Jeff Bennett very well. Great, great Morehouse man. Uh, and and a lot of individuals who are in that room. Good plug. Uh, uh, Jim Acosta, I believe, was probably in the room if they still let him in the White House. I don't know who the Times had in there. Uh, but what was yeah, the Jonathan protocol Carl now? of ABC put something on Twitter this morning, you know, asking the press secretary that that very question that, that you just asked is, you know, did she know? Uh, and had she come into contact with Hope Hicks when she walked into the briefing room yesterday morning to brief the reporters? Because if, if she knew and, and then still came in there and did that briefing, obviously that's going to raise a whole host of questions. Yeah, I would have never. I, I think, McClary, the larger issue here is that for six months now, the president has consistently downplayed the threat of this virus, has offered you know unrelenting, rosy predictions about it disappearing. Uh, saying it's it's not that bad, mostly affects old people, and you know, urge every you know, schools, sports teams, businesses, states to open back up, to you know, open back up, um, and not just that, but also his personal conduct. You know, he's disregarded the recommendations of his own health advisors, who said, you know, wear a mask, uh, you know, you know, you know, distance um, if you can. 
Uh, and he obviously has flouted those practices now for months. Right. And not just that, but has sort of mocked Joe Biden for wearing a mask. Correct. I mean, I, that's the, I mean, and, you know, he has every protocol in place to keep him safe in the right. White House. And he still flaunts all of those protocols and still right. contracts con- coronavirus. And if I'm not mistaken, was scheduled to do an indoor rally uh, in the upcoming day. So what what happens, uh, even before, before we get to what happens yeah. in the future, let's back up just a little bit more. There are a lot of people, a lot of skeptical people. Shout out to my friend Charlemagne the God, who don't think he has it. Think that this right. is a big, a, a big ploy, uh, and thinking that, that he's using this as a distraction from yeah. an otherwise disastrous debate. What type of, what type of diagnosis has been verified by a trustworthy source? Have we seen any <laughs> official medical reports with the test results? How do we know that this is true right. and not just another distraction? Well, we got a a note from the White House doctor last night. Uh, putting this diagnosis in black and white on paper. Oh, now, I didn't know that. Okay. Skeptics can say that that's concocted and he's just going along with what Trump wants for political gain. Um, you know, I would question how much political gain um, a 74 year old president would get from coming out and saying that he's got a virus. Uh, a month before his reelection, <laughs> I, I, you know, I just think that, that, that I, I'm with you, Jonathan. Let me just uh, let me just. There, there are many of my viewers, many of the listeners to the Bakari Sellers podcast who, yeah, I get it. who say this dude it. lying, and and I think that the ploy is that you know you get a virus a month out. This is the October surprise. In two weeks, you beat it, and look, your your diet was KFC yeah. cheeseburgers, Diet Coke, and you don't Helped work out. You and overcome you, the corona. Yeah, I, I mean, I get it that that. Um, you can have sort of triumphant recovery. I just think that um, the biggest challenge that this president had, Picard, politically was about his conduct, his his behavior, his judgment. And for six months now, he's been minimizing this virus and right. mocking his opponent for taking it seriously. Um, I think that's just going to reinforce questions about his conduct and his judgment. Now, look, I think... Uh, Americans, by and large, are empathetic people, and I think they're going to feel bad for his family that he obviously has now been afflicted by this virus. But in terms of their calculation of should he serve for four more years or not, um, it's just not clear to me how voters are going to reward um, him contracting a virus like this and say, you know, I want four more years of that kind of judgment. Yeah. You know, let me, speaking of judgment, we've become a country that's, that lacks, is a, lacks some empathy th- throughout this time period, at least forward facing. So let me just say that, that my family is praying for Melania and, and the president and Hope Hicks and everyone else in the White House. This, this virus is deadly and, and yeah. uh, it is beyond uh, uh, inconvenient, beyond measure. And we don't even know the lasting effects of it right now. And so, But that's the scary uh, thing. Exactly. You know, we yeah. don't know months, years down the line well, you know, what's going to happen. Right. Oh, and, and Jay Mart, let me let me do a, a quick PSA. This is for uh, the Ringer, uh, Juliet, Juliet, uh, my producer Kaya, and Bill Simmons. Uh, they want me to do this PSA. Uh, please uh, don't let your Twitter takes get you fired from work today. Okay, guys, be be calm on Twitter. I see a lot of people firing off some extremely mean tweets today. Don't let your tweets get you fired. So listen, I don't know if we've had a formal response yet from the Biden campaign, but how do you think they should respond and how do you think this affects the Biden campaign? Well, I, the one thing that I saw Bakari was that Biden put out a tweet saying uh, he was thinking of the president and Melania, um, but pretty minimal. Um, look, I, I, I think what he's going to do is be careful and prudent about this and is not going to be judgmental today um, or even tomorrow. I think there's no, there's nothing to be gained if you're Biden by doing anything besides just offering your thoughts and prayers and, um, you know, otherwise not weighing in. Um, now, what where it gets more interesting, Bakari, is what does he say next week and the week after that? You know, um, I mean, no, I you guys, that, you, the question is, I mean, so the immediate question is, you were ten feet away from yeah. this man on yeah. Tuesday night, but your family was closer. The audience right. was, was was slightly closer, so I guess. The first thing is that I'm sure he's he's getting tested rapidly, yes. daily as well. And, and by so the way, there was a pool report from that debate in which it was noted that 
the folks at the Cleveland Clinic where it was held asked some members of the Trump family in the audience to put on masks, and they declined. Um, so, you know, and they were obviously in the same arena as the Biden family. So yeah. I'm sure at a personal level, there is great nervousness today in both the Biden family and the Trump family about their own health. But look, and it's an airborne, it's an airborne virus, guys. It's an airborne virus. Especially if you're indoors. Look, I think the question is, what is the president's condition, right? Is this a largely asymptomatic bout that he's going to have in which he's back to, you know, some some resemblance of a, of a campaign in the next 10 days, two weeks? Or is, is this going to, you know, you know, effectively keep him in the White House and off the campaign trail. And I think Biden will base his decision on how he reacts upon the president's condition. Let me read this pool report for you, and then I want to piggyback yeah. on that. He says, after this is the pool report. Uh, the pool reporter at the debate filed this note at the time. Yeah. It reads, after, after you all saw the Trump family enter the room without a mask, they sat down in a debate hall where rules mandated everyone in the room wear a surgical blue mask. From your pool era vantage point, all family members who entered without a mask, members of his administration and other guests were not wearing a mask. A Cleveland Clinic doctor in a white lab coat started to approach Trump family guests to wear a mask. She offered them one in case they didn't get one. She never approached the family, but she got closer to them. Someone shook their head and no one uh, she reminded to put on a mask ended up putting on one. Wow. Dr. Jill Biden, Senator Chris Coons, as well as all of those sitting in the Democratic session section began to look over. Trump family members began to ask their guests what had happened. When the doctor, who refused to comment to the press, walked off the floor, a debate hall staffer told her, that's all you can do. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there you go. That's pretty, um, pretty I mean, it's extraordinary to hear that now in the aftermath of you know, the president having this virus. Um, but look, I think that's fitting with uh, the way the president has handled this, and not just in terms of his public comments, but in terms of, of his own behavior. And he just has not taken it that seriously and has resisted wearing a mask, has insisted upon you know, having his rallies, mostly outside, but not entirely outside, and you know, sort of largely going back to normal. He did not want to run a sort of COVID campaign in which he was restricted from doing that, which he enjoys the most, having his rallies, and, or having to wear a mask repeatedly at his events. And so um, it, you know, it's not terribly surprising that this happened because Bakari, I think his staff saw what he was doing and they sort of took their cues from him. And let me give you um, some breaking, let me give you some breaking it, news while we're, while we're talking. You know, I, since I do work for CNN, as do you, uh, let, let's get, get some breaking news here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin have uh, both tested negative. Uh, Jared Kushner and his wife, Ivanka Trump, have tested negative. From Maggie Haberman, uh, the second best reporter uh, behind Jonathan Martin at the New yeah, York first. Times. Uh, Rona McDaniel, the RNC chairwoman, yeah. has tested positive for the coronavirus on Wednesday. She has mild symptoms. She was last with POTUS last Friday and has been in Michigan since then. Well, and see, this is the whole thing, Bakari, is that we don't know who gave it to who. I mean, the assumption last night was that, you know, Hope gave it to President Trump. Um, but for all we know, the president could have, could have you know, given it to Hope Hicks or could have given it to, you know, Ronald McDaniel or Ronald McDaniel. I mean, we, we just don't know. It's, a, it, it's an invisible disease, and it's not clear um, where it came from. But obviously, when you've got people in close settings who are not wearing masks, who are not making any attempt to distance, they're more susceptible to, to get this disease. So, you know, I think that the, the best comparison we have, although this is not on point, as legal scholars would say, would be uh, Hillary Clinton with uh, a bout of, of pneumonia last year. Uh, not last year, last election. Oh, Labor sure. Day, yeah. Labor Day, um, yeah. and the New York Times covered it, covered it like it was the end of the world. It was everywhere, everywhere. Um, and Trump didn't no, stop campaigning. it was campaigning actually the, the 9-11 ceremony. 9-11 ceremony, that's At right. Ground sure. zero in 2016, that's right, yep. Yeah, and um, so it, it, how should, I mean, it, and we know that, that Donald Trump didn't stop campaigning. In fact, he used that against her. Do you expect to see anything like that from Democrats, not maybe not Joe Biden, but from Democrats today, using this oh, moment of yeah. sickness against. Oh yeah, and I think we already have seen some of that online. You know, I think we've already seen some people who are, who are, you know, uh, 
mocking mocking the president and um you know saying um you know he's getting what he deserves that kind of thing you know you know i i just that that goes back to my PSA earlier. Don't let your don't let your tweets get you fired. My my last right. question. And I, look, you. I think most I think most Democratic members of Congress, Democratic governors, are responding to this by talking about, you know, their their hope for the health and safety of the president and his family. And I think that's the posture that you'll hear mostly today. Oh, you know what? Before I get to my final line of questioning, I, I want you guys to know that this is the this is unique because usually Jay Mark calls me and he kind of baits me into a conversation about SEC football or barbecue or something like that. Yeah, yeah, the important and then stuff. He, right? And then yeah. and then and then, he, and then he just drills into a question he's working on for a story. So I finally <laughs> I get a chance to I get a chance to ask him some questions. So let, oh, let's, let me let me back well, up. What, what type of what type of national security risk is it for the president to have coronavirus? Can you talk to me about what that what that threat is or how people would evaluate that? I mean, I, look, I think countries that are not our friends are obviously going to look for any opportunity to try to, um, you know, take advantage of us. And it doesn't matter if it's the president having a virus or anything else. So I mean, obviously they're going to sort of look at this and sort of like weigh their options. Um, I mean, thankfully, we were not engaged in a sort of like widespread hot war right now. So I mean, I think that's obviously a positive. But look, I mean, anytime something this serious happens in the country, our foes abroad are going to try to figure out what they can do, how they, how they can take advantage of it. So it's important that we're on guard. Tell me this: the stock market dropped this morning. What impact will will and and the tell me tell me this jobs numbers that came out today were extremely weak. What what as you take as you look at this in totality, you're going right. into you have two hundred two hundred and nine thousand people who've gotten yeah. this uh, virus who contracted the virus. Yeah. You have a very weak jobs number. You have the president getting coronavirus. What is the economic outlook going forward over the next thirty days well, until the election? You know the markets don't like unpredictable events. You know, they don't like volatility. They don't like uncertainty. And I think they're responding to that because we have a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, and I think that's the reaction in the short term. And I think um, that's why you're going to see the, the president and Vice President Pence and probably leaders of Congress, you know, um, make comments today about the health of the country broadly um, and the government, um, because they recognize that, the, you know, Markets don't like instability, and obviously we, we got instability right now. So my last set of questions for yep. you, I, 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 I kind of hate going down this road, but this is a question that my wife even asked me this morning. Yeah. Um, uh, now we're, I, I, I am every, and everybody who's watching and, and listening to the Bakari Sellers podcast are hoping for a speedy recovery for the president, but he is in a high-risk population. Worst well, case scenario, uh, like Boris Johnson, um, if he becomes incapacitated or even worse, dies before the election, what happens then from a very tactical and legal standpoint? Pence becomes the nominee and appoints a vice president or game this out for me. Well, if, a lot of the ballots are have already not just been printed, Macari, but been sent to voters. I mean, I, there's 30 states already where people are already voting. I'm voting so, on Wednesday, by the way. So make yeah. a plan, go out and vote. I'm voting in Bamberg County in person early on Wednesday in South Carolina. The first day you can vote is Monday. So I think that's a question for legal minds of what does a party do if, if their candidate for president is incapacitated or sort of cannot be on the ballot when ballots are already printed and when people are already voting. Uh, you're a lawyer, so you, you got to tell me, McCarthy, how that works. And that's, shit. that's why I got you, J. Mart. They said, go get the smartest person you you're know. Right. And Estad was busy. Maggie was busy. Uh, I mean, I was... <laughs> Talk to the uh, lawyers about that, but look, it would it would obviously greatly complicate the election. It would greatly complicate the election, you know. But know, it would, right. who wrote this season? I mean, this twenty twenty has to be like. I mean, I don't know who who. This is like scandal meets meets Tyler Perry. It's Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, oh, it's, no. it's it's crazy. Now, uh, a little, really a little crazy bit more. If, a little bit more breaking Carolina news, real quick. Had a winning season in football. Then you know it was very crazy. We're mm-hmm. not having a winning season. We should fire Will Muschamp. I said that on this show all the time. <laughs> More breaking news. Campaign aide confirms that Senator Kamala Harris was tested Thursday as a part of the campaign's routine testing, and she tested negative. She's in debate prep, y'all, for next week. But, 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 
uh, because Mike Pence has been in direct contact with somebody who has yeah. coronavirus, I do yeah, believe what's that she gonna you're, do? I, what's she gonna I, do? I, see, here he is asking me the questions again. I don't know. I, I I woke up to this like everyone else. I will reach out and ask. I, my suggestion to Kamala Harris and her team would be that uh, Mike Pence should quarantine for 14 days like everyone else, and yeah. the debate should be postponed. Um, because uh, I don't He's making want news to, on his own show. Making news I don't on want. His own I don't. I don't want to risk. I don't want to risk Kamala or anybody else. There you go. So here we go, man. Thank you so much. Sorry, uh, enjoyed it. You know, I, I was giving you hell because I wasn't scheduled to put you on the show until. I think next next uh, April, May, June, sometime around there. But we bumped it up. We like made it happen. Twenty twenty seven, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait till you get your own podcast. When are you going to do? When is the New York Times going to let you run the podcast operation? I got plenty going on, man. I don't need a podcast. I don't think the world needs any more podcasts. Uh, I'm good. But look, well, we thanks got, for Don't be a stranger. I won't be. Check us out next week uh, on Monday. We have uh, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester on. Wednesday, if there is a debate, we have a great debate after show right at 1030 live on all the Ringer uh, platforms. It's myself, Ebony Williams, and my good friend, Charlamagne the God. Until then, we will see you soon. Thank you, J-Mart. Yeah, Bakari.